Welcome everybody to our Meet the Mentor with uh, Sylvie Covey. Uh, so we're going to be talking about her art today, um, her teaching, and all the super exciting things that she does. She is a printmaker, photographer, and painter. Um, she has a working studio in New York City, uh, where she is right now. And I was, um, we were just chatting a little bit. I was impressed, like maybe she can give us a peek um, later on during the chat. Um, and uh, she has been working um, currently or for a while uh, with lots of digital art and print, combining all the skills that she um, has developed over 45 years of being an artist. So welcome, Sylvie. Thank you. We're Good super time. excited to have you here. Mm -hmm. um, I know for me, when I saw your name on our roster for Massachusetts, I was excited. Um, and I thought, how lucky are we to have Sylvie uh, working as a mentor for us? Um, I have followed your work um, for, for a while, and um, I really... It's spectacular all the, the the things you you've done lately. I love the digital work you do and combining the photos and so on. So, you know, we wanted to chat a little bit today, and um, yeah. So, um, how about we get started on how you got started? Did you did you always know you were going to be an artist? I did. I did. My mom was an artist, and then she had to raise children, so she couldn't fulfill her life and I told her right away <laughs> that I was going to do it so I, I knew it as a child and I just loved everything about drawing and painting so uh, as a teenager I went to Paris uh, to do uh, uh, live nudes for a number of years you know I grew up just at the door of Paris and so I already learned how to draw nudes you know since age 14 to age 18 then I got in, accepted into a big art school in Paris, the L'Ecole Nationale Supérieure des Arts Décoratifs, where I started printmaking right there. I decided right away that I was going to do printmaking. I, I met a couple of uh, students um, who were building a press in the apartment, and that really got me so interested to continue that way. So I, I studied there for three years, and. Being young and stupid, I left just before the diploma <laughs> to <laughs> the world. I was in love, so <clears throat> so I left France just before the diploma, and I spent a couple of years traveling all over Asia and Southeast Asia, and that's where I was um, traveling with a watercolor block and, and a diary of watercolors, because in the early 70s, of course, I didn't have a camera or anything like that. So mm -hmm. that's how I got started in painting watercolors as a, a diary for my travels. And mm -hmm. then eventually, after many countries and adventures, I arrived in New York. And as soon as I arrived in New York, I decided that was it for me because it's so international here. I felt so much at home. I met so many incredible students. I think my second day in New York, I was staying with a girlfriend I met in Bali. But on my second day, she took me to the Art Student League. She, she was taking a class in printmaking. So she said, well, you got to see this place. So she took me to the Art Student League in 1977, and I registered in this printmaking class. My teacher was Michael Ponce de Leon. And there I met so many incredible artists from all over the world that are still my friends today, those who are still alive, are still yeah. my friends. And so I, I, I stayed there at the league. It became my second home. I, I was there every day. I became the assistant right away, so I didn't have to pay because I didn't have any money. But I survived. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know how it is at the beginning. I was there as a student for first as a tourist in New York, and then I became a student for the Art Student League, stayed uh, seven years as a student. I, I wanted to stay legally. And then eventually I met my husband, an American man, and we got married and, and so on. And um, 
I find my place here in New York, my apartment right away in 78. So I got really lucky so in so many ways. I met incredible people. And um, through the afternoon league at the beginning and then through other things I continued. Um, eventually I, I realized that uh, to survive, you had to get some kind of a degree because as an artist, so some years later, I decided to redo my 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 studies because my my French stuff was not going to work here. So I went back to college, to uh, to the uh, to Hunter College. Eventually, I got my master there in graphic arts, and right away I became a an instructor at the Art Student League. I think before the degree, actually. I started teaching in 95, mm -hmm. and in 2001, I got hired at the Fashion Institute of Technology to teach printmaking there, and I'm still there in both schools, still teaching there. Yeah. And it's uh, wonderful to be in Manhattan because I can walk to work in both schools. I can walk from 44 to 57 to the Art Student League, and then from 44 to 27 to the Fashion Institute. And so, and it still, you know, lets me enough time to do my own work because that's a good thing about teaching a higher degrees. You don't go there every day. So, mm -hmm. like, right. You know, right. And you want to have time to, of yeah. course, keep, keep working. Um, how about I will, I can share my screen um, and we can go and take a look at your, current work that you have on the website and we can talk a little bit about that. Enjoying the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new Masteries videos are added. Sorry, no, not there. Yes. So yeah, so like um, we just, you know, wanted to go a little bit on mm -hmm. your site. So like now you do lots of digital. Yes. I, I, combined with printmaking uh, and so on, right? Um, that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, click in there, and there is. Yes, the, here are the portfolio. So, one of the latest, basically, the latest show, the big show I had last year was florals. Mm -hmm. So, if you go to florals, basically, that started as mono prints on paper. Basically, I. I painted uh, on sheets of mylar with water-based watercolors, and then I printed them as a monotype mm -hmm. uh, with my etching press. Okay. And and then um, then I took those images digitally and I combined them with other monotypes I made of I call that space paintings. And so I basically, one of my technique is to layer a couple of images each time. So on mm -hmm. this image, you see, you see. Uh, so these are the original monotypes. Yes, exactly. These are the original on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they are kind of big. They are 30 by 40 or 22 by 30. Oh, wow. So those are just pure, pure monotypes on paper. Mm -hmm. Start is on on a on an acrylic sheet, and then you just wet the paper and go on the etching press to pick up the pigment with pressure. And so, so these I these are start as pure printmaking, but then you know I like to take pictures digitally and then enhance it. I'm quite good with Photoshop, so I enhance my image by layering it with other image I did. And so that gives this digital image. And then for the show, uh, I was showing in a, in a lobby in a large building, a commercial building here. So it, they wanted really large work. So those were printed with dye sublimation on chromalex aluminum. So they are uh, like 50 inch wide or 60 inch wide. And wow. uh, one of them was was published, um, was commissioned to be redone in 96 inch wide. So it's basically dye sublimation is, is a kind of technique where you bake 
the pigment into the aluminum. Of course, I don't do that here because that's, you know, you require a lot of really large equipment for that. Yes. I really like the results because it's very, it's very clean and the metal shows through the image. So you can choose a glossy or satin and you can choose a, a white background or a metal background and all and so on. So those are done that way. They are finished that way. And uh, then another part of, of, so those are my all my digital florals, which I also produce in smaller ways as pigment transfer. And, I, and those are made on, on uh, gesso uh, covered masonite boards. So pigment transfer is something I do here in the studio. Uh, basically, uh, I print my digital image on a film transfer. So it's a transparency that is made to release the inject ink. So I have these big inject printers here. Yeah. And I print in different sizes my images. And uh, then I choose a substrate to transfer the image. So for this particular project, I decide to do them on a mesonite, which are gesso, so it's very smooth. And um, so you prepare the, sub the substrate with a, an alcohol base super source. I call it the super source. And basically, you release the ink with a light pressure, uh, and so so those are made also that way. And you can also do it on metal or on paper. I've done that here in my studio many times, mm -hmm. many times. That's one of my favorite techniques. To, I call it pigment transfer. Wow! But so another thing I'm working on right now. Uh, at the same time, is all my botanical work. So if you go to the botanical prints chapter, it's also, it's if you go up there to botanical prints, botanical it's called. Go oh, here. Yeah. So botanical right now is also what I'm doing. I've been doing a lot of botanical prints when I go to my upstate studio, which is uh, upstate New York in the country. I do that only in the summer, of course. So the botanical prints are made first with pure uh, pure uh, flower or roots. So I, I first uh, prepare either paper or silk or fabric linen. I prepare it uh, uh, to receive the pigments, the, to receive the, the plants. So you, you, you prepare it with a, uh, is a, a vinegar or some kind of mordant. It's called mordanting the surface. And then you choose plants that have a lot of tannin. So you have to research a little bit some plants. And you can also prepare the fabric, like those scarves, are first dyed with, uh, with natural dyes from roots, like madder gives you a red, Logwood gives you a purple, uh, turmeric gives you a bright yellow. So mm. sometimes I first dye my surface, but when it's paper, I don't. And then you you put the plants in and it's a steaming process. You put the plants in, you package it really tight and you steam it and the plant's tannin transfers onto your substrate. So I've done that on silk when I do my scarves, but recently I've, I've used my original transfers, uh, my original botanical prints from paper. And um, then I work on it digitally. And this is what this latest called botanical space digital. So first I did it digitally like this. I took my my digital prints from on paper. Mm -hmm. I enhance them digitally again by layering them with a few of my other paintings. Yeah. So became digital prints, mm -hmm. uh, which I then I can do pigment transfer, like I was explaining. But then I also decided I wanted them on canvas. So this whole 
series, there is 22 of them. They are first digitals, which I can then do lots of different things. But then if you go into the, the chapter digital botanical paintings that are on the right, the, no, no, not those, go up. Yeah, botanical space painting. You see, yes, these. So these were made uh, on canvas and I first painted with gold because I wanted to have um, a subdued thing which is not so digital, which is more mm -hmm. painterly like. Yeah. So, so those were basically transferred on canvas that was first painted with gold. And of course I reworked the edges a little bit like my oriental paintings, you know, by ink. Using yeah. So that whole theory became a botanical, I, I say botanical space because I mixed the botanical image with my space image. Wow. And so, and those are 20, 24 by 30 inch. They are quite big. So these are going to be for my next show. I haven't shown them yet. I just put them on the website just like a, two weeks ago. Yes. So that's like my latest stuff. And I'm working on it. I'm working on more image now because I'm I'm kind of addicted to this. <laughs> I'm totally addicted to a, just taking a, a simple botanical print, you know, and then making it complicated and 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 creating colors purely digitally. Mm -hmm. What I like, and I think of myself as a digital painter somehow. Uh, because I, I'm just having so much fun with creating those shapes. And um, you can see the color clearly in the digi digital format, but when you see it on, on the canvas or on these panels of wood, um, it's just different. Uh, it's more tactile, I think. Yes, they oh. are. Yes, they are so interesting. I love that layering process that you do and combining all these different techniques, right? Yeah, so, um, from yeah. from all your background. Yeah, that comes from uh, I taught myself Photoshop a few years back uh, because I needed it, and uh, then I started to teach it and I published a book, Photoshop for Artists, which is uh, basically uh, just gives you uh, whatever you need as an artist. You know, it's not for uh, it's not for commercial stuff. It's more for artistic stuff. Uh, and so I just use my simple little techniques of layering and blending. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so those are, so you see uh, the botanical with trees and leaves, those are basically what I started with. If you look at those, they're basically those botanical prints just made from the tannin of the leaves steamed and then I collage a little thing in them with trees you know I, I do a lot of uh, transfers laser or inject and I call I, I print them on rice paper or transparent paper and then when I collage it I like to see through it a little bit still my layering uh, addiction <laughs> 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 oh. so that's it's been so interesting how you have all like i i love this one like number six yeah that's... so this one this one has also some real leaves that are inked so mm -hmm. these these are really multimedia because sometimes you know you get a print that is so so that is not so interesting so i add to it so i took some real leaves and I, you know, you dry the leaves in the book so then they are flat. And then you roll uh, an ink, I, I use all base ink for that with a little brayer. And then I printed them on the, on my etching press. So, so basically um, those are a combination of botanical print, real print leaves and collage. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, they are stunning. They are stunning. So um, let me go back. Um, how about we'll take a look at your scarves? I love those. So you can go to my store, visit. Uh, yes, I go down, go down. Yes, okay. So basically, I just opened this online store a few months ago. 
So this is what I do in the summer now when I'm upstate. Uh, so I do this uh, botanical prints on silk. So this is not no ink, no paint. This is all pure botanical chemistry. And it's basically, like I was saying, you, I start with dyeing my silk with with plants. So mm -hmm. the red with madder, the purple with logwood, the, the the green, I forgot what it's called, and then the turmeric <clears throat> for yellow. And um, and then you do a steaming process. I also dip the leaves in the different leftover dyes. When I have my, my dyes from the silk, I, I keep the leftover and then I soak the leaves in the different dyes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the yellow leaves, they've been soaked in turmeric. And um, then you put them down on the thing, you tie it up with a tight package and you steam it. Then of course, after two hours steaming, you unpack everything, you throw away the the leaves, which are basically falling apart at this point. In this in this scarf, there is um, a lot of um, geranium. There is some peonies, and there is the, um, I kind of forgot the name of this now. I have a hole, a hole in my mind. But anyway, it works best with uh, plants that have tannin. Okay. Strong. So okay. all of these are done that way. And then, so I did I did some squares. Those squares are 35 by 35. It's kind of fun. Sometimes I do in layering too, like a couple of them didn't come out so well. So I just did it again. I did the whole process again, more dumping and putting the leaves and packing it and steaming it. The last two on the bottom right are done with a couple of layers of those. And I find them more interesting actually. So. Yeah. It's very cool how it's a, like, I guess you don't know what you're going to get, right? Exactly. You don't know what you're going to get, which is, which is sometimes a, a surprise, you know, uh, and, and sometimes, you know, I forget to say that uh, you have to add some iron in the process. Uh, when you, when, before you steam it, you dip the, you, you have to put them down on, on the, so plastic and then you also put a blanket which is basically a, a strong paper towel that has been dipped in iron water and the mm -hmm. iron water is what makes the color a little bit uh, dark and it what triggers the the printing actually it's it's really a, a natural chemistry that happens so it all depends you know if i put enough iron or not enough sometimes i use rust or you know, sometimes sometimes my bath are a little bit too old or too or too dirty and everything is an accident sometimes. Yes. Yeah. You, you have no control. Let, I wanna ask you something about that. Yeah. So do you <clears throat> do you buy these pigments or do you oh, no. harvest them? Do uh, you oh, go oh, out oh. And... Well, there is something that I buy from a website which is basically yeah for example the madder which is a ground root yes i buy it or uh, the logwood i buy it it's the powder yes because you know i'm, I'm not going to start doing it myself that's like crazy yes so but they are natural they are not um they are not um uh, what, what i mean is they come from nature they basically ground grounded root or grounded pigment. Mm -hmm. Turmeric I buy in powder form. You know, you can actually put it in your food. Turmeric yeah. is really good for you. Um, and you can also use henne or uh, all this. Yes, I do buy those natural pigments or mm -hmm. root. But then the plants, you get them and out the of the I get from my, Yes, from my garden because the plants, I use them fresh. So so I, I just use whatever is around me that I've, I've re I read about the plants and I find out which is better, which has more tannin. Some of them don't work, but of course I've already tried it 
a lot of stuff that don't work. You know, yeah. I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, but uh, also once a year, I have a little party with my girlfriends from upstate and we gather together all the plants from our different gardens and do a one day one day party with with that to do uh, scarves together so I get plants from their gardens that day <laughs> which is nice right <laughs> so yes the, the plants are from wherever you are and you know there is a botanical uh, community out there I find out when I started doing it I find out there is people all over the world doing this of course different yes. countries so they have all kind of different plants in Israel or in in India or in wherever, and they all use the plants they have on, you know, in their gardens. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's fascinating to to uh, uh, reach out and figure out what's happening there at there in the world, in the botanical world. It's it's very exciting, I think. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a I have a question for you. And yes. if you has a question, just let us know. Like. Um, you can definitely ask Sylvie questions. I want to ask you a question about um, your inspiration. Because I find I find it like your work has so much nature. Yeah, well, I'm inspiration just... in it. And you're in the middle of New York. <laughs> so I know, but, but, you know, I've, uh, I've always been... Uh always been inspired by nature no matter what yeah I'm not I'm not painting buildings or things like that it's not my thing at all so even though I live in New York uh, I do have this place upstate where I now spend three, three months a year at least and uh, even if I don't go there that's just that's just what I'm interested in you know I just think of uh, uh, I just think of the universe. I think of myself a little tiny speck and there is such a huge universe. So I'm more interested in nature because it's more attractive to me. And um, whatever the universe is about, you know, so time and place and um, um, so, yeah, the city or the buildings are not interesting to me at all. Yeah, I was just <laughs> going to come back to... Um... To your website and then just like scroll down here so like you have like the florals forests and trees and then you have lots of images that um lots of work that combine the human figure and yeah, yeah i used to do a lot of nudes that was a lot of my things i'm not interested now to do it now but i did it in the past yeah. uh, in landscapes and different yeah. places so I just a little bit of Times Square, but that was that was just a, a a little bit. So right now I have a commission to sell some of my image from, from the city, but I'm doing it. But uh, anyway, yes, that's um, if this is all my basically my current things. But if you go in my in my past thing, my um, my early work you'll see that it's pretty consistent mm -hmm. uh, you know in my early work like there is a watercolor which is basically my my travels then there is a print which is basically my my training and whatever I teach now is all traditional printmaking with digital yes my paintings are also kind of uh, esoteric or I call it visionary or whatever. But yeah, so your paintings, I think, were these ones I was looking at. Yeah, so I did. I painted the tarot at some point. Uh, those are also paintings on canvas, twenty-four by thirty. Wow. I paint. Uh, yeah, this this painting on the right is me traveling, <laughs> and um, I've traveled to different countries I was inspiring mm -hmm. um yes it's always uh grounded in in the universal nature basically mm -hmm. so I saw one of your questions I just read it quickly that 
ask, do you think digital is cheating? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had some. I, I hang on a question. Uh, is dig digital cheating? Not at all. You have to think all of this as tools. Mm -hmm. Right, the digital world is a tool, and you have to think that when I started teaching at the Art Student League, photography was not recognized as an art form, which is only in the 70s, for God's sake. Photography was not recognized as an art form back then. And now, if you go to any museum all over the world, di digital work, digital photography is totally accepted as an art form, thank God. So you have to just uh, think of photography and the digital world as a tool. You do what you can with a tool, you know. I think the computer is a tool and I'm just better at it as if I was doing it by hand. I know I, I can paint, I can draw by hand. I'm not into it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm think I'm doing better. You know, I used to do photography on film in the 90s. Uh, and I was not so good at it in the dark room. I had to learn all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I did learn it, but I was not good at it. My my prints were gray. You know, it was like I was not happy with it. Though I learned it. But then when I discovered the computer, I became really good at it quickly. So I stick with what I'm good at. Right. I and I, I think using a tool is nothing wrong with it. Um, I, I have lots of admiration for everybody who paints, not with digital. I think it's uh, it's wonderful, and I'm all for it. Uh, but I'm I think uh, uh, discovering new tools is part of what I want to do, and uh, as a teacher, uh, that's very much part of uh, my philosophy. Actually. Um, most of the people who take my class at the league, for example, which is a school for adults, not for grades, you know, the people who are in my class for the last 25 years, they're still there. <laughs> the reason is because I don't want to get bored using the same things all over again. And so whenever there's something new, I learn it and then I teach it. I'm, I think uh, the reason to be a teacher is to share. So uh, I make a point to learn whatever comes out in the printmaking world, of course, and then I teach it. So for example, uh, the last 20 years since, 25 years at least, since I became interested in combining photography with printmaking, I had to learn all of the techniques. And 25 years ago, it, it was basically, uh, we were using a very toxic uh, chemistry to to uh, put on the metal plate, it was baking it, you know, it was very bad, bad toxic stuff, but I did it. And then making your own transparency with, with a spray and all of that. And um, then we moved on to newer technique, newer materials. I used the Torre plate for water, waterless lithography. I used the, uh, the, uh, the blue emulsion. Uh, the polymer film that you laminate the plates for photo etching. But of course you had to adjust the uh, half, half tone screen in different size and all that. I, I put all of this in my book, by, by the way, modern printmaking, all of these techniques I described. But I move on to whatever gets better. And like today, the best is solar plates, which are pre-sensitized polymer plates, sensitized to light, and they're called solar plates. And we make beautiful work with it, uh, really high sensitive, uh, incredible uh, deep photography, uh, as good as a uh, photogravure, which is a, a, a continuous tone. Photogravure doesn't have a half tone, it has continuous tone. And we make now solar plates and photo etching as good as photogravure. Visually, you don't see the dot or the half screen. Mm -hmm. So yes. that, to me, is the best when you don't see the, 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 the dot. Unless you take a loop, you don't see it. Then it's a beautiful image. It's smooth. And, and so that's what we do now in my class. Uh, we move on to the non-toxic 
the ways of doing things, of course. Uh, at the Arsene League, we don't use nitric acid or, or zinc anymore. We use only copper and ferric chloride because ferric chloride is not an acid, it's a salt, so it does not emit fumes. Um, LFIT, unfortunately, they're still there with the zinc and the nitric acid, but I avoid it myself. <laughs> and um, so that's what I have to say about uh, is digital cheating. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a tool. Yes, and and I think I and I think we had that conversation before that you were saying that like right now, you, you know nowadays it's seen as fine art, right? More oh. and more, as Look, you use these photographs into the, your work. Yeah, because it, it's it's my photograph, it's my image, it's my work. It's it's just a tool. Inject is a tool, the, the, my printer is a tool. Uh, it's what you do with it that counts. Right, mm -hmm. right, exactly. That's very cool. Um, so, okay, so I wanted to switch that a little bit and um, just chat about um, your teaching. Like I, you've, you've taught for a long time. Like I'm sure you had thousands and thousands of students. Yes. So for this group, we're going to have up to eight people Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so what what do you what do you what do you have in your mind for that? Like, do you? Well, like... first, I I would like to meet these people to find out what they are interested in because, uh, oops, sorry. I'm sorry, uh, okay. I'm just gonna not answer. So, uh, I have to find out what these people are interested in, and then I will just go into it because there is so many ways. Uh, I mean, I can teach them what I do, but not everyone has, let's say, a Photoshop program, things like that. So I, I personally cannot, uh, I, I don't really work on the iPad to do my image. I need a computer and a real Photoshop program. So mm -hmm. some younger people don't have that, can afford the program and so on. So in that case, I, I can uh, adjust to other things, you know, in my, online class, we were doing a lot of jelly printing, let's say, during the pandemic, because a uh, lot of people were working from home and don't, don't have an etching press. So I can do that. We can do jelly printing. Um, I mean, there are so many things we can do, uh, or so many things I can talk about. So I would have to figure out from each person what is their interest, and then we can mold my sessions to that. We can also do one session on one subject to please one person and then move to another subject to please the next person and so on. And that way people get accustomed to different things. Different things, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think you said you also do um, cyanotypes on the summer? I do, I have cyanotypes. Yes, definitely. Uh, that's something uh, uh, a lot of people do from home because you can basically uh, use the sun. Uh, and I just taught a cyanotype type uh, class at FIT just uh, last month. And that's a lot of fun, you know, uh, using different objects or transparencies, negatives. Uh, so I can, I have a lot of uh, materials to do presentations, to do uh, uh, examples of work from students some of mine, but also students, you know, because that's what I was doing during the pandemic. We were making presentations. So I can do that. I can present uh, a series of slideshows that basically inspire people. Oh, I'd like to do that. Oh, I'd like to, oh, how do you do that? I can stop the slideshow and talk about it. I can do that. Um, I am open <laughs> to, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I think this would be a little bit like my online class, except it would be once a month, where basically uh, I will look at people's work and then talk about where, whatever the people involved in the class want me to talk about. Uh, I have to leave it open because um, there is so many subjects possible. So many possibilities, I know. I know. I think it's fascinating just... I love your sense of play, like that you are experiment with so many things and 
Um, I'm sure some things are a little bit more straightforward, but other things are like, well, you do this, but you don't know what you're getting. And, and then you, and what, with what you get, a, a prince or whatever, right? Like, then you work with it to come to something that you, yes. come to something yes. that you like, right? Well, that, that basically comes from my, my training as a printmaker, where you don't see what you're going to get until the end, basically, but you have to think about it. I, I keep telling my students, printmaking makes you smart because you have to think. <laughs> and... that, that should be your tagline. <laughs> so you have to think, yeah. to think and, and anticipate or, or you have to stay open to the, to the result, you know? So you have to be open and anticipate and, um, Basically, yes, that's what the path of printmaking is in general. And so that, that's what makes it also interesting to me. Um, and, you know, the, the idea is to keep having fun. If you don't have fun, what's the point? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like I just want to um, quickly, I'll just talk about like, so how the, pro like the structure mm -hmm. of the, the, the program, the mentorship works. So um, the group of eight, up to eight people will meet with Sylvie once a month for two hours and people can present their work and talk about what they're they've been working on or questions or so we usually do that for the first hour. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people can present or can ask questions, burning questions, uh, present ideas and, you know, get Sylvie's and also the whole group's feedback on, on their work. And then uh, we have a second hour, which is led by Sylvie in different techniques, different ideas, you know, and that as she was talking about, like whatever the group is interested in doing, um, learning different ways of doing things um yeah to... on that on that um, subject i think i would like to use videos because because my all the techniques i'm talking about are so diverse uh i use video youtube videos to uh, basically uh, describe the technique and all that of course uh, i can stop the video and we could talk uh, it's, it's just that the videos for me are very useful so we can uh, uh, go through so many different subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not going to do myself a, a demo with my own hands because yeah. it's too complicated and whatever I do takes a lot of time. So instead, I will use YouTube videos to uh, to teach whatever we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As examples of things, yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, so then, then we end up the session um, with a homework or an idea for people to work during the month um, based on whatever they're interested in. Like it can be uh, one thing for everybody to work on, but it can be different things for people to work on. You just adapt it to your own interests. And uh, I meet halfway through the month with people, like just the group members, um, not with Sylvie, um, just to see how things are going, if people have questions. Uh, it's always a good chatting and social as well. People get to know each other and help out, you know, and people people need that support, right, from, from artists in their own level. People know what they're going through and... Um, so on so it's always good it's a good incentive like lots of times you get to the end of the month and people i haven't done anything oh okay so let's you know we get motivated to to get working and and so on and then we'll meet for our next session with sylvie and we can plan you know for one session to the next what we're gonna talk about it can change it's fluid um it's yeah so it's it's really exciting i i I'm excited to get this group started. Um, we are scheduled for the first April Wednesday yes. of the month. So I'm just going to quickly look in my calendar, which would be Wednesday, 
um, April 3rd, we're planning our first session. Uh, so about two, three weeks from today. Um, and um, yeah, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Mountain Time, which yeah. is also 10 a.m. to 12 noon um, Eastern Time. Okay. For for the the meetings with Sylvie. So yeah. Any questions, comments? I I do. I have a question. Um uh Anna, thank you for hosting today. And Sylvie, uh it's lovely to virtually meet you and see your your work and uh some uh, aspects hearing some aspects of your process and I I live in the great state of Maine I am north of you and uh, there is a huge community up here who does a uh, botanical well using botanical materials to print on a variety of substrates and I this is not my um, uh, I don't have those skills Perhaps I will, because I'm going to go hang out with some of them this summer. Ooh. But um, I wonder, it sounds very uh, equipment intensive. And what does a an artist need to begin in this type of process? Okay. For the basics. It's not, it's not, it's not really the equipment. It, you need a space. Like uh, I, I do it in my, in my studio garage up there. Basically... Mm -hmm. um, you need a, a, a long table for, for, let's say, if you wanted to do scarves or even paper things, you need a table. And uh, I use plastic sheets like uh, that I buy at the hardware store, you know, this plastic, these big plastic sheets. And I use um, some some uh, pots, uh, like a, a, a pot for the kitchen, except if you use it for botanical, you never cook in there again. It has to be a pot for botanical only, right? Because you don't want to mix your stuff. So a pot and then a couple of bowls. Uh, it's, it's not that much equipment, except, of course, you, you need the, the plants and the, mm -hmm. some paper towels, things like that, you know. But it's really the space. Like, you need a table to put out the thing, to lay it out to do your package, you need some string, things, you know, small stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I, I do the steaming in my kitchen. Yeah. Uh, do it in your kitchen, but not with a different pan. Yes, exactly. You, you never use the pan of your, uh, where you eat oh. or you cook. You, you, I just buy those those pans on uh, uh, garage sales, the kind yeah. of garage sale things, you know, and I keep it in the garage. I don't keep it in the kitchen. I just use a stove in my kitchen. Okay. And I, I wash everything with a hose, a garden hose outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's it. It's uh, for botanical printing. It's not that much uh, in terms of equipment. You just need uh, the plants. Uh, if you're going to use some uh, some natural dye, you can buy the natural dye. Uh, I buy the silk from Dharma, the website Dharma has a lot of botanical stuff, including the, the natural pigments. And um, that's that. It's, uh, yeah, it's really the, the big table for me is it. Yeah, and then you need yeah. like, and then once you open them, you take them out. Oh, okay. I saw so, in your studio, you had everything hanging. Oh and... yes, that's true that uh, you you can use a place where you hang your, your um, laundry. Sometimes I do it outside when the weather is good. I just hang it outside, or sometimes I just hang it in the garage just to let it dry. Yes. Sure. Or you can also let it dry on the table, but it's better if you hang it. So it's really a matter of space, really. And and um, I would not do it inside because mm -hmm. it's a lot of wet stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So. So if you are in Maine, you, you might have, you might be outside. So that's, I would not do it in New York City. No, yeah. I don't do anything botanical in New York City. Just because I, I don't want to deal with uh, uh, dirty in my apartment, basically. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's that's a great, that's great thing you're saying. You have a 
uh, botanical party every summer. Yes. Looks fantastic. It's a lot of fun. I've, I have a little French club up there, which oh, is nice. funny because uh, where I am, I met two French women my age who are also just basically they left France at the same time I did. And, it's, and we find each other up there years later, many, many years later. So we have a French club where we don't speak French, but we hang out together <laughs> with their husband or whatever, you know. Right. So nice. nice. Yeah, and if you go to Sylvie's uh, Instagram, like you can see some of the photos of yeah. of the botanical, um, the the scarves hanging, and like it's really, it's really cool and really inspiring. So, yeah. So I think do do we have any other questions or any other um comments like anything Sylvie to add well I'm looking forward to uh, start this group and uh, meet more of the artists from mass to use I'm really happy to be joining and look forward to a, a great uh, collaboration with everyone yes I'm super excited too I think you have so many things to to give so many things to share and I'm super excited so um, to get this group started. Um, thank you so much, Sylvie, for the timing to chat with us and talk about your art. It's always fabulous to hear um, the the artists talking about their own art and how excited, like you definitely show the excitement of, you know, everything you do. And, and I guess it shows part of yourself, right? How, right. Um, how you're yeah as an artist like how how you show as an artist as a teacher um yeah so uh our group started uh scheduled to start in april um this will be you know if people still have um comments and and questions after if you're watching the recording just reach out to us sylvie or um anna and uh yeah we'll go from we'll go from there thank you very much sylvie we'll okay. see you soon Yes, thank you. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for your questions. Ciao.